ਜਸ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਦੇਖਦੇ ਹੋਏ ਸਾਰੇ ਦਰਸ਼ਕਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਮੇਰੇ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਪਿਆਰ ਭਰੀ ਸਤਿ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਅੱਜ ਦਾ ਮੁੱਦਾ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਮੈਂ ਤੁਹਾਡੀ ਹੋਸਟ ਆਸ਼ਮਿਤਾ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਇਸ ਸ਼ਾਮ ਦੇ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਇੱਕ ਵਾਰੀ ਫਿਰ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਬਹੁਤ ਅ ਇੰਟਰਸਟਿੰਗ ਸਪੈਸ਼ਲ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਹਾਜ਼ਰ ਹੋਏ ਹਾਂ ਅ ਕੁਝ ਇਹੋ ਜੀ ਦੁਰਘਟਨਾ ਹੁੰਦੀਆਂ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਿਹਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਪੂਰੀ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਇੱਕ ਕਿਸਮ ਦੀ ਬਦਲ ਜਾਂਦੀ ਹੈ ਭਾਵੇਂ ਉਹ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਸਾਡੀ ਸਿੱਖ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਕਰੋ ਜਾਂ ਕਿਸੇ ਕਿਸੇ ਛੋਟੇ ਸ਼ਹਿਰ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਵਸਦੀ ਹੋਈ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਕਰੋ ਰੀਸੈਂਟਲੀ ਯੂਨਾਈਟਿਡ ਸਟੇਟਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਰੀਸੈਂਟਲੀ ਵੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਕਹਿ ਸਕਦੇ ਯੂਨਾਈਟਿਡ ਸਟੇਟਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕਿੰਨੇ ਸਾਲਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਪਿਛਲੇ 10 ਸਾਲਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਸਪੈਸ਼ਲੀ ਮੈਸ ਸ਼ੂਟਿੰਗਸ ਦਾ ਇੱਕ ਕਿਸਮ ਦਾ ਕੈਂਸਰ ਇੱਕ ਬਿਮਾਰੀ ਕਿੰਨੀ ਵੱਡੇ ਲੈਵਲ ਤੇ ਫੈਲ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ unfortunately ਸਾਡੀ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਵੀ ਇਸ ਬਿਮਾਰੀ ਤੋਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਬਚ ਪਾਈ ਭਾਵੇਂ ਉਹ ਓਕ ਕ੍ਰੀਕ ਵਿਸਕੌਂਸਨ ਦੀ ਗੁਰਦੁਆਰੇ ਦੀ ਸ਼ੂਟਿੰਗ ਹੋਵੇ ਜਾਂ ਪਿਛਲੇ ਸਾਲ ਦੀ ਫੈਡਕਸ ਫੈਸਿਲਿਟੀ ਇੰਡੀਆਨਾਪੋਲਿਸ ਸ਼ਹਿਰ ਦੀ ਸ਼ੂਟਿੰਗ ਹੋਈ ਜਿਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਨੌ ਜਾਣਾ ਗਈਆਂ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਚਾਰ ਸਾਡੀ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਦੇ ਮੈਂਬਰ ਸੀਗੇ ਉਸ ਸ਼ੂਟਿੰਗ ਨੂੰ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਕਿੰਨੀ ਖਬਰਾਂ ਸੁਣਨ ਨੂੰ ਮਿਲੀਆਂ ਬਟ ਜਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਇਸ ਮੁਲਕ ਦਾ unfortunately uh, process uh, renda hai thodi cher baad koi hor khabar vaddi ban jandi hai koi hor headline agge aa jandi hai te oh shooting lokan di yaadash vich nahi unne vadde level te reh jandi kinni ki shootings hui hain pichle saal to la ke pichle hafte pichle mahine de vich hi gal kar lo ki lokan nu ik vi kisi shooting da inna koi jyada oh ਨਹੀਂ ਉਹ ਯਾਦ ਰੱਖਦੇ ਬਟ ਉਸ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਇੰਡੀਆਨਾਪੋਲਿਸ ਸ਼ਹਿਰ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਦੋਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਗੱਲ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਲਈ ਇਹ ਇੱਕ ਲਾਈਫ ਚੇਂਜਿੰਗ ਇਵੈਂਟ ਇਹੋ ਜਿਹਾ ਲਾਈਫ ਚੇਂਜਿੰਗ ਇਵੈਂਟ ਸੀਗਾ ਜੋ ਪੂਰੀ ਜ਼ਿੰਦਗੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਜੁੜਿਆ ਹੋਇਆ ਹੈ ਇੱਕ ਧੱਬੇ ਦੀ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਯਾਦ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਦਿਲ ਤੇ ਲੱਗਿਆ ਹੋਇਆ ਹੈ ਉਸ ਸ਼ੂਟਿੰਗ ਉਸ ਹਾਦਸੇ ਨੂੰ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਕਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਉਹ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਇੱਕ ਪਰਮਨੈਂਟ ਚੇਂਜ ਐਕਸਪੀਰੀਅੰਸ ਕਰ ਚੁੱਕੀ ਹੈ ਉਸ ਚੇਂਜ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਰਹਿ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਉਹਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਇੱਕ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੀ ਮੂਵਿੰਗ ਡਾਕੂਮੈਂਟਰੀ ਫਿਲਮ ਬਣਾਈ ਗਈ ਤੇ ਅੱਜ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਬਹੁਤ ਖੁਸ਼ੀ ਹੋ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਉਸ ਫਿਲਮ ਦੇ ਜੋ ਫਿਲਮ ਮੇਕਰ ਹਨ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਅੱਜ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਜੁੜੇ ਹਨ ਉਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਜੈਕਟ ਬਾਰੇ ਤੇ ਇੰਡੀਆਨਾਪੋਲਿਸ ਦੀ ਜੋ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਇਹ ਸ਼ੂਟਿੰਗ ਆਮ ਹਮੇਸ਼ਾ ਲਈ ਬਦਲ ਗਈ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਕਹਾਣੀ ਦੱਸਣ ਲਈ ਅੱਜ ਇਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਪਹੁੰਚੇ ਹਨ ਸੋ ਪਲੀਜ਼ ਜੁਆਇਨ ਮੀ ਇਨ ਵੈਲਕਮਿੰਗ ਆਰ ਗੈਸਟ ਫॉर ਥਿਸ ਈਵਨਿੰਗ ਅਵਾਰਡ ਵਿਨਿੰਗ ਫਿਲਮ ਮੇਕਰ ਸਰੀਤਾ ਖੁਰਾਨਾ ਸਭ ਤੋਂ ਪਹਿਲੇ ਸਰੀਤਾ ਜੀ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਟੂ ਆਰ ਸ਼ੋਅ ਸਤਿ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਸੋ ਮਚ ਅਸ਼ਮਿਤਾ ਗ੍ਰੇਟ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਹੇਅਰ ਇਟਸ ਸੋ ਗੁੱਡ ਟੂ ਹੈਵ ਯੂ ਸਰੀਤਾ ਯੂ ਆਰ ਸਮਵਨ ਹੂ Uh, has been working for years in the film space uh, telling um some of the most underrepresented stories about the south asian community especially focusing um on female stories and subjects uh, you know even though you have this illustrious background whether it's harvard or columbia film school um here you are telling the stories um that usually have a common man at the center or a common woman uh, we 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 love that and recently you got to work on this very moving project about the FedEx facility shooting that took place in Indianapolis last year before we get to that i would love for you to tell our viewers a little bit about yourself um you are a new yorker uh which i have a bias of course i am a new yorker as well but Uh, your background is varied and i would love for
a lot of South Asians on television. I, I, the only thing I remember from growing up is, you know, turning on channel 13 and my mom would be watching the Indian program every Sunday, you know, and that was about it. And maybe there was a Bollywood film on, but I think early on, um, you know, hearing stories, especially about my parents' immigration and kind of uh, hearing about partition from my family members, you know, these very important stories that I would hear in my family, but never see any representation of, you know, personal stories, uh, you know, from my father's growing up or my mother's growing up. And I think it just uh, ignited a desire in me to kind of see that, you know, kind of representation. I mean, now we have these kinds of words, like you want to see representation on screen. But I think when I was younger, it was just some desire to see uh, you know, some aspect of my life represented in the broader world. So, you know, sort of the desire sprang up, up on a very personal level. And then, um, you know, when I was growing up, it was the mantra of doctor, lawyer, engineer. It wasn't that anybody was going to encourage you to go into the arts. Yeah. Um, but I found my way um, and I started, I, I was always into writing you know, writing little stories. Um, I started doing some performance art, you know, just sort of like side, like theater group kinds of things. Um, but it wasn't until uh, probably around 9-11 that I actually started making films. And I started doing some experimental stuff um, and then quickly came to documentary um, soon, like when, just around when 9-11 happened. Um, and, you know, it was, it was such a huge traumatic event in New York um, that I felt really compelled to tell some of the stories that I was he hearing, especially from young people in New York. And one of the first films I did was called uh, Bangla East Side. And it was about um, a group of teenage uh, Bangladeshi immigrants in the Lower East Side and their experience as young Muslims uh, with 9-11. And I did that project um, because I was already working with a high school uh, that served these students. And so I was in the field of education for a long time before I got into film. And I was working with these young people and, you know, we started, we started using a camera and we started documenting their stories. So I kind of got started on my own and then later went to Columbia Film School and got my MFA. Um, you know, I think my parents were still, you know, really worried about me becoming a filmmaker and, you know, what kind of career path was that? But, you know, um, I think, I think I, you know, it's important to remember those kinds of origins, even though I'm at, you know, in a pretty good mid-career place now, just because it was a difficult journey. Nobody necessarily was encouraging it, and there weren't necessarily a lot of role models for me back then, you know, female filmmakers or even um, a lot of South Asian filmmakers that we knew about. So, you know, we've, we've definitely come a long way. Um, but it's always been really important to me to to tell the stories like from our community, um, not just definitely the diasporic stories, you know, stories, um, you know, but I also do a lot of work in India. So it's kind of going back and forth and having that relationship. And, you know, I am really interested in, in telling the stories of our community um, as they really relate to contemporary issues. So, um, you know, last year, I think last year, a couple of years ago, actually, I did a story about South Asians and the pandemic in mm -hmm. Queens right. called Home Delivered. And it was just a very short piece, but, you know, really looking at the lives of um, South Asians through a contemporary lens, mm -hmm. speaking to conversations that happen around race or class or, you know, in this case with Crossroads gun violence. So mm -hmm. that's important to me to have that representation to really link it to what's going on 
in you know the contemporary world um, and bring South Asians into a complex story, um, not just an insular story about ourselves, but as we relate to others as well. Sarita, you you mentioned um, you know contemporary uh, you know the, the the issues that we encounter today in our present, um, especially the diaspora. Uh, unfortunately, it comes with good and bad, right? So while there are all of these success stories or feel good um, you know happenings um, about our community there are just as many stories that are painful and crossroads your film about the fedex facility shooting last year is is one of those painful uh, narratives that captures what our community and the, the larger indianapolis community encountered as a result of that shooting um you know you mentioned that there wasn't a lot of support um, certainly not role models growing up when you got um, into this field um, or you thought to pursue this this line of work uh, but for Crossroads you did have support I'd love to know um, you know any project of this uh, capacity does take help how it was that you got started um, with this project and what kind of support uh, did you have outright? I, I think this would be really important to share for some young filmmakers um, or up and coming art, uh, you know, folks pursuing this career to hear what kind of resources they could tap into perhaps. Yeah, great. Um, so when the shooting first happened, I heard about it through a New York Times article. It was on the front page and there was an image of these women grieving in the Gurdwara. You know, I, I was really taken aback just seeing that and seeing the words mass shooting, um, you know, and it immediately evoked, you know, a lot of questions like what was going on? Was this a hate crime? Um, it was, you know, very close to the 20th year anniversary of 9-11, where we know a lot of the Sikh community were targeted, and there was an anti-Muslim backlash. And, um, so anyway, I, you know, at this point, when I first heard of Art of the News, I, um, I wanted to know more. And, you know, the thing is about mass shootings, the unfortunate thing is you hear about them in the news, sometimes and then they'll disappear after you know a week or less something else takes place another mass shooting as we've seen re recently in the spate of mass shootings takes its place or something else comes up in the news cycle so i heard about this shooting in indianapolis just just briefly and i had so many questions and concerns about what was happening um you know and the reality of an independent filmmaker is you kind of need to do a lot of work on your own before you get a lot of that support right so it was important to me um, i reached out to some friends at the Sikh coalition and you know they're a national group that provides resources and advocacy for sikhs and they were already out in indianapolis on the ground helping uh, provide support to the community and a couple of weeks later i joined them out there um, and attended one of the vigils and prayer services and, and just got to know folks in the community and talked to them, did a little bit of filming of my own. And I wasn't really sure what was gonna happen with the project. I just knew I had a desire to do it. And it was a few months later when ADOC, the Asian American Documentary Network, put out a call um, and they were supporting uh, soliciting pitches for a series that they were collaborating on with World Channel, as well as CAM, the Center for Asian American Media. And so they were looking to do a series of short films on um, the Asian American experience and Asian American resilience. And so with the little bit of material I had and the desire to tell the story about the FedEx mass shooting, I pitched it to World and ADOC. Um, and it was 
you know, th this is pretty typical, you know, you, you'll pitch something to a broadcaster or a funder and, you know, we were, we were happy and lucky that the film got commissioned and then we received some funding in order to make the project. And uh, what was really nice is, you know, in a situation like this, it also had distribution, you know, and, and was going to be broadcast on World and PBS and, and streamed on, on their sites. So um, that's always good news for a filmmaker. You want to make something and you want not just for it to be funded, but you want people to watch it. So, Especially for a South Asian and an independent filmmaker, I think that um, it's really kind of inspiring to hear um, that you were able to tap into these resources. Um, you didn't have to kind of claw your way to, you know, to get this film made. There were interested parties that wanted to hear these stories. That's certainly um, a, a step in the right direction. And I'm sure very different, um, you know, from the experience that independent filmmakers had within our community just a few short years ago. Um, so I'm, I'm really glad to hear about that. Sarita, we have some clips from the film that I want to share with viewers. I want to talk a little bit more about your experiences on the ground. We're going to stop for a quick commercial break here. Sarita Kurana, don't go anywhere. Viewers, this is Sagnal Isitana Jurero. Sarita Kurana, filmmaker, Crossroads Movie the Joke, Indianapolis TV shooting. The Kahani Das Die, Ode Vare Gal, Jari Regi, Break Those Spot. Break the Bad Sarnu Swagat Kardan to see the Kripp program, Ajdamuda, Sadi community, Jitivi Vas Die, Una the Nalki, Changaki, Mada Hunda, Una the Kahania, Kistana, mainstream media, the which we are Barley Mulkan, the Joe platforms hun, Una the Dasia Jandi, Ajodi Galkari, a Kahania, Kadikavar, painful stories, Hunia. जो कि कम्युनिटी नू हमेशा ले बदल देनी है, but इधर ये मतलब नहीं कि इन्हा नू प्रिजर्व करना, इन्हा नू अग्गे दसना या लोकानू वो सच्चाई दिखाना जो महसूस कितनी गई सी किसी भी हाथ से दे वेच जरूरी नहीं हैगा। आज ऐसी एक एवो जो फिल्म मेकर दे नाल गाल कर रहे हैं, जिन्हाने FedEx facility the mass shooting जो कि पिछले साल इंडिया नेपल्स दे विच्छी ओ दी कहानी खास करके साड़ी कम्युनिटी दा पंजाबियां दा सिखां दा जो थे वास दे सी जिना दी परिवार मारे गए उस शूटिंग दे विच्छ हो ना दी कहानियां दसियां गई हैं इस फिल्म दे विच्छ Crossroads फिल्म दे फिल्मेकर सरिता कुराना साड़नाल जोड uh, it's great hearing about your background and the strides that you know even you've seen in your lifetime um, as a filmmaker uh, to be able to tell this story um, that you know so badly af affected the South Asian or the Punjabi community that lives in Indianapolis which is getting more robust by the day right we talk about the Midwest there's so much uh, migration from the the big you know uh, northwest states as well as california and uh, excuse me northeast as well as the western states um but you hear about something like this and it gives you pause for a second um but you experienced these stories firsthand when you spoke to these families the families of victims um you know that are once again changed forever uh, for the rest of us, it was a news headline, like you said, that we maybe saw, you know, last April. Maybe we saw, uh, you know, some follow-up stories around it. Uh, but that was it. It was gone from our frame of mind. But these folks are living with this um, forever. And you, you spoke to them, included them in the film. Um, Sarita, before we kind of get into some of the stories you heard, um, Tell us about this this one clip in particular that we're going to share with the viewers. Um, the the pain that was experienced by the individual Gary Joho. Um, tell us about this clip. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the family members of one of the victims of the shooting. His Gary's mother uh, worked at the FedEx facility and was killed that day. Um, we reached out to all four families uh, who lost members in the shooting, and it, you know, it was a very—it's a very particular and difficult thing to talk to somebody who's lost 
their family members in something as horrible as a mass shooting. And Gary uh, was willing to speak to us and he really opened up to us. And I, you know, his, his, his pain is apparent, his feeling of, you know, how unjust this whole thing is apparent. And so we're gonna see a little clip uh, of him just talking about his mom and what she meant to him. All right, let's watch this clip. Gary Johal, Janadi Ma, FedEx facilitating shooting the shooting the which Mari Desi. A clip to see the exact their crossroads film to. I guess the simplest way I could put this, if you guys ever know what a god is like. That's what my mom was like. Every time I went to the temple, Gurdwara, everything that they taught over there, like everything that they read out of the holy book, kind of just explained my mom to me, you know? That's how good she was. That's how good hearted she was. Uh, it's, it's really, um, it, it's one thing to hear about a, a shooting um, even when you learn about the, the victims or their families, um, it, it kind of seems like an arm's length thing. But to hear about someone talk about the victim as not just another, um, you know, person that was killed in a tragedy, but as the mother that they worshipped like a god. Sarita, what was that like for you? How, you know, did you overcome the challenge of capturing that on film um, while these folks were still grieving this tragic yeah. loss. Yeah, so I think it's always really important as a filmmaker, you know, you want to really try to be transparent about what you're doing with, uh, you know, the, the folks that you're interviewing and asking to be in your film. Um, and you want to build that trust and so with gary you know and it, it was it was a process you know we talked to him and his wife we went over a few times my producer Suryanka, ray and i we went we had dinner with them we met them you know several times and and talked about the project talked about where it might be shown and our intentions like what we wanted to say as filmmakers and you know Gary at that point hadn't really spoken to much media at all um, you know maybe maybe he was in, in some vigils like in and at making some a few small remarks uh, when you know the news media from around the country came but really he stayed away from the press and he told us it wasn't until he met us that he really wanted to share his story um, and and it, it just takes time, you know, to establish that trust. And we were very grateful to Gary because, you know, in a lot of ways, hearing someone's experience um, and and pain is is really the emotional an emotional connection you want to make with the viewer. It's not just what happened, but it's the impact it really has on individual people's lives as well as on the larger community. So Gary's story really helped us uh, ground us in the film to really make that emotional question and really see the faces of the victims and then see the impact on their families. Um, and so we were really grateful to Gary for participating in the film. Um, and to his wife, who's who's behind the scenes, and you know, really uh, was key to helping us, uh, you know, also make Gary feel comfortable to be on camera and share his story. You know, there were there were three other sick victims, and you know, even though we approached everyone, a few of the families you know, it was just too traumatic to even talk about it. And then some families also, you know, were involved or thinking of being involved in lawsuits against either the police, right. uh, the Indianapolis police or the FBI, because there were a lot of questions around the investigation and mm -hmm. how it was handled. So they couldn't speak to us on camera. 
Um, but yeah, it was really an important connection we made with Gary and his family. Uh, Sarita, once again, I'm, you know, uh, I guess this is a really important distinction, right, between what we do here and what folks like you do. Um, you just said it yourself that sometimes, um, you know, your work takes you beyond just relaying the facts. Our job as news is to state the, the, the you know, objective facts of the situation, this many people were killed, this was their background, this is how the investigation is going, motive, etc. But you take that further by talking to these families and actually capturing um, the emotions that they're going through those, you know, moments immediately after or in the preceding weeks and months after this kind of a tragedy, um, you know, touches them. Um, this was a little different from some of your other projects in that, uh, you know, your subject was mired in grief. Um, how did you uh, put that across without, um, you know, letting that grief overshadow the whole film? Yeah, I think it's, you know, I didn't, I never thought in my life I'd make a film about a mass shooting. Right, you just, you're not, this is not like on a bucket list or something. But, um, so it was new territory for me, even, even, you know, dealing with the subject matter and dealing with a community that's grieving. And, and I think the first thing you really need to do is feel very empathetic towards mm -hmm. that community. And so, you know, like I was saying, it's so important to build that trust. And, you know, especially because I'm not from Indianapolis, right? I'm Punjabi. I understand Punjabi and, you know, I go, it, it's, but I'm not from that sp yeah. specific community. So I am coming in as an outsider. And one of the things uh, I did with my producer is we went to Indianapolis and we went to the Gurdwaras. And we met people and we were there, you know, on a Sunday, you know, we had longer, we prayed and we met people and we talked to a lot of people who were part of this community. Mm -hmm. um, again, without a camera, right? Because yeah. you just want to relate to yeah. people as human beings and you want to hear um, what's going on for them and how this mm -hmm. has affected them. And so we, we spoke to quite a few people right. in the community, a lot of FedEx workers um, and it was interesting. A lot of people were really willing to talk to us and tell us, you know, what they felt upset yeah. about, what they felt uncomfortable with in terms of FedEx's security or, you know, right. how, how it was handled with the police. But a lot of people did not want to be on camera. You know, there's still like, I can talk to them and they can talk to me. Like we can sit in the good bar and share, you know, uh, a meal together. And they can tell me everything about what it's like to work there. But at the end of the day, you know, it's it's like, but uh, it's okay. I don't want to be on camera. There's definitely which, which a, is part of the process. Of course, you know? of it's course, part of the process. It's it. I'm sure it helps you build your background um, as yes. well. Uh, you know, information on top of which you build a story that we all get to see as a finished product. You keep mentioning community and. Um, while your story, uh, you know, stitches together individual experiences, there is an element of a community that is changed forever. And I want to talk about that. I want to share another clip from this film. Um, we're stopping for another small commercial break, Suita. Please stay with us. Viewers, this is the Crossroads film. So, um, Indianapolis the community, which is the community of the community, has an impact on it. We'll talk about that break. Those part. Break the bond more hazard on it. Jodo vi koi dur ghatna hath sa tragedy uh, ek community nu affect kar diye sab to pehle sawal uth diye. E sadnal kyu hoya? Ki nu rokya ja sakda si? E de vare investigation sa nu ki kuch das sakdiya ta ki an wale samay de vich eho ji tragedy kisse naal fir na hoy. Jis tarah si recently vi vekh rahe hain jodo vi koi mass shooting hundi hai, pavyo. 
FedEx facility the shooting way uh, recently um, jo horrific shooting as the Texas elementary school which they keep Buffalo supermarket which they keep um, you know recently 4th of July the ek parade they which they keep um, Chicago they need a sorry shootings to bad joke communities Jin Savala they now ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਜੀਣਾ ਪੈਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਸਵਾਲ ਅਕਸਰ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਤੱਕ ਆਮ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਤੱਕ ਨਹੀਂ ਪਹੁੰਚਦੇ ਉਹ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੀ ਰਹਿ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਆ ਪਰ ਜਦੋਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਸ FedEx ਫੈਸਿਲਿਟੀ ਦੀ ਸ਼ੂਟਿੰਗ ਬਾਰੇ ਗੱਲ ਕਰਦੇ ਆ ਡਾਕੂਮੈਂਟਰੀ ਫਿਲਮ ਕ੍ਰਾਸ ਰੋਡਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਫਿਲਮ ਮੇਕਰ ਸਰੀਤਾ ਖੁਰਾਨਾ ਇਹੋ ਜਿਹੇ ਸਵਾਲਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਐਡਰੈਸ ਕਰਦੀ ਕਿ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕੀ ਕੁਝ ਸਵਾਲ ਹਲੇ ਵੀ ਆਮ ਬਿਨਾ ਜਵਾਬ ਪਏ ਹੋਏ ਆ Sarita Khurana said now jude han welcome back once again Sarita you know we're talking about this film we're talking about the individual stories that you got to capture Gary Johal who lost his mother that day um in a senseless act of violence um that was one story uh but your film captures many of these and there's countless more that aren't included in the film because a lot of these folks don't want to speak in front of a camera um to, you know before we kind of discuss some of the community um the aftermath that the community is still feeling i have another clip that i want to show that covers exactly this um we're going to start with showing this clip but i want you to give us a little bit of a a preface of what we're about to see here so with the police and FBI investigations into the Indianapolis shooting um the community tried very much to stay abreast and were very, obviously very interested in why this took place you know was it a hate crime uh what were the motivations of the shooter Brandon Scott Paul uh who worked at the FedEx facility um and knew this facility very well and chose this facility intentionally um and this is a facility a FedEx facility where 80% of the workers are Punjabis yep. and you know that was so so when the police and FBI investigated the community really wanted to know were these things being taken into account uh were they really investigating everything they could and finding out why this took place and so the clip you're going to see now is a number of members of the community asking these questions and wanting to know you know with these investigations are they asking the right questions will there be uh will there be answers to these questions uh that people really need to know what happened and why it happened absolutely let's check out this clip from the film crossroads for the sick community it's not what happened it's why it happened when the offender is dead unless there's some smoking gun manifesto you're never going to know the whole story but what you want to know is a general picture why did he target this shift who's working this particular shift what is the security like what's the workplace culture the shooter in this case lived you know 30 to 40 minutes away and had actually worked at other places and chose this place for a reason he used to work there and i'm sure he knew the folks there why this took place is a question in my mind and i'm sure is a question in a lot of people's mind that they want the answer for um that's that's one of the many questions uh, that you know we should all be asking uh, it's it's really good to see folks from sikh coalition uh, amrita um you know maninder walia ji from indianapolis um these folks as well as uh, you know the the local individuals like gary who was in that clip um that were affected in this tragedy um you know n- Sarita so when you were kind of going through uh, these interviews you know um asking about the questions that they were left with 
was there any you know sense of deja vu in your mind just as an average american um the news cycle seems so full of mass shooting after mass shooting um cities big and small seem to be affected on a regular basis as a community did you feel that there was any similarity in the questions especially uh, a minority community a community of color um like we've seen recently in in Buffalo at the supermarket um where the gunman outwardly said he had a racist manifesto um or even Uvalde which was primarily a Hispanic population very small city um you know what kind of larger similarities did you see when you were putting together these these questions that the community in Indianapolis was encountering yeah so you know this was a community of color that was primarily affected and the shooter was a young white male which we've seen in in most most of the mass shootings that we've heard about um and you know the big question here one of the big questions was whether this was racially motivated um whether this was a hate crime and you know this was also a year in which the rise in anti asian hate crimes was you know off off the charts and so you know you also have this happening in the context of 911 you know 20 years where uh six have been targeted you know you mentioned oak creek um and we all know about baldir singh sodi in mesa arizona what the, you know the first the first person who was mistaken as a muslim and uh shot in in a hateful incident and so you know whether or whether I, whether this was a hate crime or not we'll never actually know right mm -hmm. because the shooter is dead did they find white supremacist propaganda on this computer yes now i think what happened for the community like i didn't go into this film knowing that the community had so many questions about the investigation or that they felt so uncomfortable about the investigation by the police and the fbi i discovered that in talking to them mm -hmm. you know and i think what happened was they didn't feel like they got their due they didn't feel like their um the investigation was thorough enough like all the leads were followed through and that, or the information wasn't shared with the community so that the community knew that all the leads were followed through um and i think it's it's it was an easy dismissal you know and is that because this is a minority community in the us you know is it because uh the police can speak to everyone because there weren't enough translators who understood punjabi is it because um you know as as an immigrant community uh it's it's kind of wrapped up you know it's dismissed and wrapped up very quickly mm -hmm. i mean the questions you have to think of it in the context of like if you if you if you're in a situation you where you've been dismissed or you've been uh you felt bias many times in your experience like how are you going to feel how are you going to feel about this incident what are the relationships between the police and the community you know i know the folks in indianapolis and then there he works very hard at you know with the local government and with the police and educating the indianapolis community on who sikhs and punjabis are you know but it 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 shouldn't always be a one way street right and i and i think it's you know the the bigger questions around uh you know whether these communities are getting their due whether they're really sufficiently like these incidents like these are being looked at as hate crimes mm -hmm. you know whether the police and the community is the police are being transparent with the community right. in, in terms of their findings you know these are some of the bigger questions i think that not only affect this community in indianapolis but yes. you know any of the communities that you mentioned where we've seen these mass shootings recently sarita i you know just from personal experience especially you mentioned manindra valiaji you know seeing the kind of inroads he's made 
it is uh, it is a little bit shocking to think that despite the amount of effort that has been put into a community like Indianapolis, uh, where our Punjabi uh, folks have done so well to make a place for themselves, both economically as well as socially, they've become part of the fabric locally there. Um, folks like Manindraji are, you know, very well uh, ingrained within law enforcement or, you know, local elected officials and have those communication, those dialogues open. And yet there was still an uphill battle, like you said, um, to get this designated as a hate crime. And it's ongoing for sure. We may never know for sure what will come of that. But it's staggering to know that if if that's the outcome in a place like Indianapolis, how much work do we have to do in the countless other, you know, states and cities where our community lives, um, where tragedy could strike at any time. And the very entities that are supposed to be there to help us, to, to support us or to look out for the community. So something like this doesn't happen again to document it classified in the right form. Um, may have no idea how to do that, um, you know, and, and that just brings me to some of your learnings, right? I, I want to know um, what your big takeaways or what, what learnings you can pass on to our viewers um, as a result of your work on this film. I have to stop for another commercial break here. Uh, viewers, to see this way, Sarnal Jurero, this film to this hand se to, asi ki kuch sikh sag deya. Thodi jodi wari gal karange, break to spot. कोई भी हादसा कोई भी ट्रैजिडी जो सड़ नाल हों साते वापरती है सब तो पहले तो सा रिएक्शन होंगे कि सड़ नाल ही क्यों हुई पर उस तो बाद सू एक स्टैप बैक लैके ये पूछना चाहिए कि इस तो असी सीख की सकते हैं ताकि आने वाले समय के अगे जाके अगली पीढ़ी नाल या किसी होर योजी चीज़ ना वापरे इंडियनैपलिस शूटिंग तो भी काफ़ी कुछ साड़ी कम्यूनिटी सीखने मिले खास करके फिल्म मेकर सरिता खुराना जिन्हों ने डॉक्यूमेंट्री फिल्म क्रॉस रोड्स उस ट्रैजिडी उत्ते बनाई सरिता सा जुड़े हुए हैं सरिता यू नो वन वी टॉक अबाउट लर्निंग्स आई एम श्योर यू हैव सो मैनी इवन दो अ लॉट ऑफ दैम लाइक यू सैड बिफोर प्रॉली नॉट थिंग्स यू थॉट यूड एवर बी यू नो मेकिंग अ फिल्म अबाउट मैथ शूटिंग्स um racial profiling the loss of life elderly loss of life um you know folks who are just making an honest living uh helping provide for their family um when we think about what learnings the rest of us can take away uh from a tragedy like this and and some of the experiences you encountered uh, while you were filming crossroads i'd love to hear your take on 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 something we can walk away is some action item that makes us not feel so helpless in the face of you know yet another tragedy happening to any one of us anywhere um uh, in this country what do you what do you think we can take away from this experience well i think you know sadly with recent news events there's a lot more attention being paid to gun violence and gun gun policy you know and so i think you know one thing that we learned about was the red flag law which you probably have heard a lot about now that's come up in these recent shootings but the red flag law basically you know flags an individual who might be at risk to himself or to others and owns a a, a weapon and that law can uh you can be flagged basically and have your weapons taken away from you and prevented from buying weapons in the future you know and if you if you watch the film you'll see that that f- red flag law could have been used in a in this situation in Indianapolis because Indianapolis has a red flag law uh but wasn't you know the the shooter in this case uh there was an incident that happened a year ago with her mother reported him mm-hmm. um and you know no one uh his case wasn't sent on to the judge to the uh to be flagged 
you know, the prosecutor's office didn't do that. And a lot of people ask, you know, why didn't that happen? So I think one thing that we really learned was like finding out what, uh, what you know, gun violence, gun policies there are in your community, right. what your representatives uh, stand behind, what they're doing around uh, gun violence these days. You know, and I think a lot of people, their eyes have opened up given how this, this is so frequent you know, mass shootings in the US. You know, I think last year there were over 600 mass shootings, you know. Um, this year, you know, it's already at least 300, 350 or something. So it's it's a frequent thing. And I think a lot of people are like, well, what what can be done about this? You know, what, what do my representatives stand behind? What are the policies in our community, you know, in our state? And that that's a place you can begin. For sure, Absolutely. you know, uh, um, and then the other root thing is, you know, one thing we, I realized how difficult it is to prove something a hate crime, right? You know, and we've seen like in this past year, there have been so many incidents against Asian Americans, and so many have not been classified right. as hate crimes, you know, and and, and so what what it, what what's the what are the policies behind that, and why is that so difficult when, you know. Clearly, this this looks like a hate crime. Where, if you're looking at a facility where 80 to 90 percent of the workers are, you know, Punjabi, and you're targeting that facility, mm -hmm. you know, it makes you wonder, like, what 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 does it take to prove that? And and so there there are some, you know, I guess political lessons we've learned. I, um, I, I but if I, I could add one more thing. Yes, please go ahead. Just the, just the lesson of resilience that our community has, the, the lesson of, you know, after something horrible like this, how important community is in that healing process and how resilient a community can be to sort of move past something like this. I think um, the resilience message, especially for our viewers watching at home, uh, really hits close to their heart because sikhande vich chardi kala ta hamesha hi assi mande ha ke assi chardi kala de vich hum regardless of how difficult a situation we may be in um but your political uh points here get to know your lawmakers their stand on gun rights on the gun issue um i think that is one of the most important and at the same time, make inroads with those local officials uh, that actually help with designations um, of a hate crime versus just a regular crime of chance. Um, you know, in Indianapolis, once again, our community uh, is, is doing a great job and still had an uphill battle. Uh, that's a big lesson for all of us here. Sarita Kurana, once again, such a pleasure to talk with you. We are so happy that not only did you take on this project, you were able to put it together, um, but that this story is now widely available. Crossroads Film can be accessed on YouTube, um, so anyone can go watch it, and I highly urge all of our viewers to check it out. Um, it's a very moving piece and certainly one that we can all learn something from. So thank you for your work and your time, Sarita. Have a good Thank you, Ashmita. Great Sat to be Sita. on the show. Thank you. Um, it's the program we Samapti Kardeya. Once again, gun violence nu lake. Um, koi eho ja share ni, koi eho ji community ni hai gi, jo kal target ni ban sag di. Uh, kai communities de vich jado unanu target kita janda hai, जो उस हाथ से डी एफ्टरमैथ होंडा है बहुत ही ज़्यादा मारा होंडा है असी भी उस गिनती देवे चांदने हैं क्योंकि असी एक माइनॉरिटी देवी माइनॉरिटी हैं सो साढे ले जो सब तो वड़ा लेसन ए हो जी हाथ से हैं तो सानू लाना चाहिए था कि किन्ना का कम हले बाकी है साड़ी कम्युनिटी नो ए हो जी चीज़ इन चीज़ों वाले डिस्कशन ते प्रोग्रामिंग करना लगातार शेयर कर दे रवांगे क्रॉसरोड्स फिल्म जो कि इंडियानापोलिस फेडेक्स शूटिंग वाले बनाई गई फिल्मेकर सीता खुराना वालों 
ਯੂਟਿਊਬ ਤੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਜਾ ਕੇ ਵੇਖ ਸਕਦੇ ਹੋ ਸਾਡੇ ਲਈ ਸਾਡੇ ਗੈਸਟ ਲਈ ਕੋਈ ਕੁਐਸਚਨਸ ਕਮੈਂਟਸ ਕਨਸਰਨਸ ਆਫ ਕੋਰਸ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਹਮੇਸ਼ਾ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਲਿਖ ਸਕਦੇ ਹੋ info@justbroadcasting.com ashmita@justbroadcasting.com ਮੈਨੂੰ ਦਿਓ ਇਜਾਜ਼ਤ ਸਤਿ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ